Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts wishing you a happy new year and a blessed one. Listen, we're going to talk about love because that's the perfect place, the perfect platform to start a new year with is love. Perfect love. Okay, listen, what I want to deal with is we know that God is love. Now, the scripture that says that is 1 John 4, 8 and 1 John 4, 16. Now, I'm just going to read 1 John 4, 16 real quick so you get what I'm saying. Just one verse. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Now, when you look at Genesis, and Genesis says, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, uh, in the beginning, God created, okay, now we know all the rest, it's, that's the creation part, but you notice in the beginning, God, let's start the beginning of this year with everything God is about, and the foundation of what he is about starts with the word L O V. E. Now, some of us think we know what it is, and some of us think that we're going to tell somebody else what love is, but there are times we fall short and we don't know it. Now, this is how I know that some of us don't really know what love is. I can get on the internet, and I don't care if it's a movie star, if it's the president of the United States. If it's a public figure of any kind, do you know some of the most vicious, ugliest? Oh, that's really bad English, isn't it? Okay, let's go back. Some of the most vicious, ugly, and nasty comments that I hear people say about President Obama, Michelle Obama, about some of the movie stars. I mean, some of y'all can be really catty to call yourselves Christians. Think about it. Now, we're moving into a new year. Do you really think you should take that old mess into the new year? Because listen, this is what God says about love. And this is what I love. This is a great challenge for us. Whether we are prejudiced, Think about it. Whether we have religious pride and think what we have is it and what y'all got is no, no, and y'all ain't getting to heaven because you wrong. We got it and you don't. Okay, listen. Or you have a boyfriend or girlfriend and you're talking about each other's business till the cows come home. Or you have a husband or a wife you're frustrated with or children you're frustrated with. And the whole block knows your family business. <laughs> they know about your kids' dirty socks. They know about your husband's bad habits and your wife's funny ways. That is nobody's business because love, back to love now, covers a multitude of sin. It does not broadcast it on the rooftops. And if you guys loved the leaders of this country, you would pray for them. You would fast and pray if you really have concerns. Hello. You wouldn't have pictures on the internet with him with big monkey ears and her looking like a man. You wouldn't go into all that. You wouldn't smear, have a smear campaign to make people look small because you know what? God doesn't like it. We already said God don't like ugly. The bad English, but you get my drift. Listen to this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. One verse. I want you to hear it. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Moving right along, the verse continues. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Selah, think on that for a minute. 
or as the as the people in New York used to say, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Love, baby, love. Love covers a multitude of sin. <sighs> Listen. When you say you love your brother, when you say you love your sister, you are a born-again Christian. You are a believer in Jesus Christ. Why aren't you believing in what Jesus Christ believes in? Why aren't you perpetuating what Jesus Christ perpetuated? Respect, grace, kindness, goodness, tenderness, compassion, understanding, mercy, all of that is packed up in one solid little thing called love. Think about that, you guys, when you start getting happy with your mouth, when you're putting other people down. Some of y'all put blacks down. Some of you put whites down. Some of you put Latins down, Latinos down. Some of you put American Indians down. Some of you don't want foreigners in the country because they ain't about nothing as far as your concern. Am I right or am I wrong? Think about what I'm saying now. Is that love? Hmm? Even God said, love your enemy. Whoa. Now what Jesus would do with people like ISIS or some of the prejudiced ones out there, he would see their nastiness, their ugliness. And if they were in a position where they were in trouble, he would go to their rescue. Just like he would the people who loved him. Because he says, you can't tell me that you love and all you do is love the people that are good to you. He says, no, you got to love your enemy too. That's real love. If your enemy needs water, give him drink. If he's hungry, give him something to eat. Whoa, that's kind of deep. That's a challenge, ain't it? That's hard to be nice to people that are mean to you. That's hard. That's why you need the love of God in your heart, because human love won't get it, baby. God's love is called agape love. That is the kind of love that goes beyond meanness, that goes beyond belittling and nasty attitudes and, and ugly treatment. and, and oh. Okay, I'm going to stop there as far as that goes, because I can get real emotional when I think about how far God's love goes. But the main thing I'm trying to get you to see is how far our love is supposed to go. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Now, if President Obama or if one of the people from ISIS or one of the Muslims from the Middle East comes knocking on your door and tells you they need you to call the ambulance for their daughter, would you call the ambulance? You may want to leave them locked out the door if you don't trust them. But would you call the ambulance? Or would you tell them, let them stew? What would your attitude be? Think about it. We don't realize how short we fall. Some of you guys run YouTube Christian stations, channels, and you are so vicious and catty. I can't hand, I can't even stand listening because there's so much hate and contempt. I don't care how wrong somebody is, baby. You are not without sin. You don't have the right to pick up the first stone. Oh, but you're picking them up and you're throwing them. Think about what you're doing. Think about what God feels about what you're doing. Whoa. Okay. Listen. I'm trying to take my time. <laughs> Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. 
and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What if your neighbor is a black man or a black woman with black kids and your son likes the black woman with the black kids and they start dating and he wants to marry her with her black kids? What's your feeling about that? Whoa, think about that. But you're a born-again Christian. Now, what if you are a black family, black mother and father, and your son or your daughter goes out and meets a white man and they fall in love? He wants to marry her. <laughs> and you have this little hidden, hidden disguised belief that saying that like should stay with like. But that isn't in the Bible. If Moses married an Ethiopian baby, that sure ain't a problem in the Bible. But listen to this. You're having a hissy fit, aren't you? Hmm? You're having a hissy fit. Because what's wrong with that boy she used to date? And why can't she be with her own? Well, why can't she be with somebody else? God made them all. What is your problem with that? Think, think, think about where your heart is. Where is the love? Where is the love? Oh, I wish I had thought to play that song in the background. Where is the love, you guys? We are lacking horribly. The verse 40 says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Everything hangs on that one right there. Loving God, loving your neighbor as God loves you or as you love yourself. However you want it, it's all the same thing, baby. Love. Unconditional love. When Jesus, listen, when Jesus was, was arrested, what did Peter do? He did what a lot of us would have naturally done to protect our friend or our loved one. He took his sword out and sliced off the guy's ear. What did Jesus do? You know how they say, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? Took his hand, picked up that ear, put it against that man's head. And the man was his enemy, was he not? And he placed it back on his ear and healed him. What would you have done? Excuse me. What would you have done? <laughs> yeah. What would you have done if... Uh, I, you know, you have to really put yourself in these places before you start sitting on your high horse and getting ready to criticize everybody else that's doing it wrong. Baby, you're doing it wrong too. Because that is not love. If you can't love somebody, you don't even have the love of God in you. If you don't have the love of God in you, you're not his. You can call on Jesus all you want. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise Jehovah. Oh, yes, I am a member of the first church of the blah, 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 Christian. And stick your chest out as big as you can. And God is like, baby, you stink. Don't put my name on that. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And baby, if you ain't loving, it's iniquity, which means sin. So put your rocks down, put all them stones down, because you don't have the right to throw one. I don't have a right, you don't have a right. The only one that has a right to throw a stone in this picture is Jesus Christ. Or God coming out of the clouds, coming from heaven. He can throw a stone. He can throw a whole lot of them. He can throw meteorites and all kind of stuff at this world. Because we have really done each other wrong. You men, married, born-again Christians, forcing your wife to have sex. 
beating your wife, treating her like she's nothing. That's not love. That's not perfect love. That's a mess. And it's time for you to repent. Yes, 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 yes. We're starting a new year, you guys. Come on, we're going to grow together. And yeah, there are going to be times I'm going to say it nice. And there are times I'm going to say it pretty rough. But it's all in love. Because we can't pussyfoot about this walk with Christ. That's why half the world doesn't want to be bothered with us. When the scripture says they will know you by how you love one another, the love you show for one another. Well, guess what? Some of them don't want to be bothered with what we have to offer because our love stinks. Stinks on ice like foul, rotten fish. And if it stinks to us, the imperfect ones, imagine how we smell to God. Think about that. It's time for love. Love, you guys, love. Love and forgiveness, mercy, kindness. Come on now. It's not that hard when you lean on God for his love. Because you sure can't do it with yours. I can't do it with mine. But when we need more love, when we know that our attitude is raunchy, that we're prejudiced, when we know that we're violent with our temper, when we know that we belittle people and we make fun of people that aren't even bothering us, but we make fun of them because everybody else is making fun of them, so we're going to join in. That is sin. There's no other way. You don't, don't call it a mistake. You're doing it on purpose. You know what you're doing. It's sin. Jesus said, he that loveth me keeps my commandments. But how are you going to keep his commandments when you're doing everything that's diametrically opposed to who he is, to his character, to the, the fruits of his Holy Spirit? It's all about love, you guys. Okay, I'm done. Uh, I'll probably have another video in a few minutes. But this is my video for 2016. And you may be mad at me, but I love you anyway. And happy and blessed New Year. In love, the love of God. God bless you.